Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Adam Meicher. I'm uh, the technical PCD lecturer here in AV System. Uh, we are the ACS vendor since uh, 2006. And uh, today I'd like to um, talk about uh, new trends in the ACS uh, deployments, which we see um, over the years uh, and now uh, due, due also to coronavirus, uh, some of the, the devices are more important than uh, the others. So uh, what uh, I'd like to talk about is um, the new device types which we have uh, in, in the um, ACS platforms uh, currently. Um, then I'd like to focus uh, on, on the ones uh, which uh, are rapidly growing right now, uh, like Wi-Fi mesh and IPTV uh, set-top boxes. And also later, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, a little bit about new features for the end users. So this is a little bit related with the new uh, world uh, which we are re living uh, with all the remote um, uh, jobs and uh, uh, a lot of stuff moving online. And also at the end, uh, how uh, the TR69 uh, is handling these new requirements, um, because of course uh, we have uh, some extensions uh, like TR369, uh, but still many, ma vast majority of devices are using the uh, good old uh, TR69 uh, protocol. So um, initially, uh, when I was even starting working here in AV system, TR69 was not really uh, very spread around, uh, but now this is, uh, let's say, a standard. Um, so each ISP, basically when they are buying new device type, they want a TR69 on board. And this also applies to new device types. This 10 years back, let's say, uh, TR69 was just, just available mainly on, on the modems. Right now, uh, we have it uh, available on many different uh, device types, um, including Wi-Fi repeaters, uh, PLC devices, uh, Wi-Fi mesh devices, uh, and uh, of course, IPTV uh, set-top boxes. Uh, we also have uh, some other other devices where tier 69 is actually on board. Uh, we are also uh, offering as AV system, we are offering the tier 69 library for devices uh, themselves. So um, uh, we see that there is a, a huge demand uh, for even different device types uh, on this matter. So uh, with Wi-Fi mesh, mm, this is a bit uh, related with the smart Wi-Fi optimization uh, from, from the previous presentation. Uh, we see that uh, Wi-Fi is becoming uh, more and more important for, um, uh, for the households. Uh, because simply, uh, if uh, someone is working remotely, uh, he needs to have very good Wi-Fi coverage, uh, no problems with the service, no outages, uh, and uh, no uh, interference with, uh, with different channels. Uh, of course, uh, we can do it. Uh, we can do the optimization on the uh, gateway level uh, with these periodic scans um, uh, and uh, trying to find uh, the best channel for for this particular device. Even trying to aggregate uh, devices in the specific building, for example. But still, uh, in in some cases, uh, we need to have just Wi-Fi repeaters or Wi-Fi mesh, which is quite easy uh, to be installed. So uh, with this Wi-Fi mesh um, approach, uh, we see that many uh, mesh devices are also supporting TR69. Uh, and uh, this uh, introduces even more complex uh, device management as uh, we need to manage multiple devices in terms of Wi-Fi optimization, not only uh, one single device, which was usually the gateway. Uh, with this, uh, we have uh, uh, we need to also show this to the customer care agents uh, for uh, for the ISP um, uh, to manage these devices and also handle the NAT issues, which are uh, right now uh, handled with uh, either XMPP or STAN ex extensions to TS69. Um, for for the customer care, of course, uh, we need to present the data 
uh, in a way that they will understand uh, how is the set network set up at the customer premises. So for this, uh, we had to, of course, extend our, our uh, ACS and also other ACSs need to uh, show this uh, kind of uh, Wi-Fi mesh uh, topology, Wi-Fi mesh network. Uh, and uh, this topology is, of course, taken from TS69 um, uh, parameters, and this is presented uh, in the ACS uh, view. Um, on top of the Wi-Fi mesh uh, development, we also have more parameters available uh, for uh, gateways and the devices connected uh, to them. Um, nowadays, uh, on many modern device types, we have uh, parameters which are indicating uh, the Wi-Fi signal strength per host basis. Uh, we have uh, um, parameters which can tell us more about the Wi-Fi quality on per host basis. Uh, like five years ago, it was still very difficult. Uh, there were not too many devices which had these parameters on board. So even if ACS was, uh, was able to handle this, uh, it was not really the case because it was not available on the devices. But now uh, on the on the newer devices, the, the ones which are now deployed in the networks, we have uh, we have all of this uh, information and we can present it uh, uh, to the uh, customer care agent, even to the self management user of the ACS, uh, to show how is their network state in terms of Wi-Fi. Uh, another big. Uh, spike in interest uh, we see in IPTV world. Uh, this is probably uh, also related with some new regulations coming in European Union, because uh, this applies uh, right now mostly to, to Europe, uh, that we see a, a lot of uh, IPTV projects coming in. Um, IPTV had uh, some interest like um, six years ago, uh, at least uh, from our experience, but later uh, it uh, went a little bit down. This was usually due to the quite bad implementation on, of tier 135. So basically uh, the problem was that there was already ready software for the IPTV set-top box for which they had, the manufacturer had uh, some kind of resources uh, prepared, right? And then if uh, we wanted to add some additional functionalities like TR69 uh, protocol handling, all these counters, uh, it was just not fitting the, 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 current, uh, the, the current hardware on the set-top boxes, right? And everyone, uh, as we know, manufacturers want want to uh, to have uh, limited resources just to sh just to sell cheaper. And from ISP perspective, this is also beneficiary. So that was uh, quite uh, quite of an issue that the tier 135 was not really well uh, implemented. And also, uh, usually manufacturers were just selling their own systems. Uh, together with the set-top boxes. And uh, uh, so they were selling their own IPTV set-top box with uh, bundled uh, monitoring platform to uh, do this, uh, all this monitoring for the IPTV service. Um, right now it is changing because uh, the, uh, the ISPs want some, to have some unified management. Uh, it, it comes uh, across everything. So fiber, um, DSL, and also um, IPTV. So they want to have single system which will handle multiple device types. And here the TS69 is really good uh, because of its uh, very good uh, business definitions. So for example, it is uh, uh, said how the firmware average should be done. There is no, no um, uh, let's say vendor specific stuff uh, done for this like it is in SNMP. And that's why uh, this is, uh, uh, IPTV is, is getting back to tier 69. And now we see that uh, also on devices, the tier 135 uh, is better implemented and we can show this data, we can monitor this data uh, in the ACS. Uh, another uh, big part uh, which is uh, seen now in the IPTV is uh, Android package management. Um, TR69 originally actually didn't have very good support for this. Uh, we just had uh, the firmware upgrade and that was it. But uh, um, vendors implement even some custom um, flows into the TR69. So it is possible to manage uh, the Android uh, packages via TR69 and our download 
um, uh, methods. And with that, uh, we are able to uh, show uh, and, and manage uh, what kind of applications are installed there on the IPTV set to box. Uh, on top of this, uh, of course, we have full uh, full capabilities uh, for uh, the, the monitoring because if we have a TR69 on board, then we can we can connect uh, connect the device, and even without TR135 support, we can do some basic diagnostics, uh, which is uh, quite simple for for set top boxes like uptime versus software version. Usually, when people have issues with their set top boxes, they are rebooting them frequently, right? So we are showing showing some um, uh, KPIs just to show uh, the performance of the specific software version versus uh, the number of reboots, which is very, very nice KPI to define if this particular software version is, core, is good for, for this set of box. Um, now, uh, regarding the new features for gateways, of course, we are talking here about uh, the smart home, like smart locks, uh, smart refrigerators, and so on. But uh, we see that there are more requests now from our customers to implement new uh, features on existing gateways. One of them is um, uh, is the the uh, uh, parental control, for example, right? Um, because all the children, uh, well, a vast majority of children were were uh, learning um, remotely. Uh, parents wanted to have better control uh, over them, what they are doing uh, with their computers, which uh, when they can access the internet. Uh, so this gave uh, some new use cases into, into the remote management. Um, so for example, uh, we have implementations in TR69 for the time-based uh, access control when uh, this uh, particular host can connect uh, to the internet uh, what uh, what hosts can can have uh, access to 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 the Wi-Fi uh, with this the the parent uh, can control what uh, their children are doing and uh, they can control it even from their self-management application so uh, this is not only now important from the ISP perspective but we are also giving the self-management application to the end users uh, to manage their own uh, device uh, uh, remotely. On top of this, uh, we of course have the uh, URL, uh, URL filtering, uh, so uh, this uh, this blocks uh, can be done directly on the on the gateway. Uh, this of course uh, needs some support on the on the gateways, but as I said, uh, many uh, device manufacturers are currently implementing these new features uh, because uh, well, ISPs, big ISPs, they are requiring this and they are um, um, just changing the software of of the gateways. Um, on top of the standard uh, zero touch services, uh, which usually we have triple play, right? Uh, internet, voice, and, and IPTV, uh, we have additional uh, uh, capabilities uh, for configuration, for example, firewall. Uh, it may sound simple, but uh, sometimes uh, this firewall configuration uh, helps us a lot uh, also for the uh, security. Um, as some of the viruses which were attacking uh, gateways, and we know uh, which ports are used for their intern internal communication. Uh, so when we detect that uh, the port is opened on the device, uh, we can easily close it on the firewall of, of the CPE itself. Uh, so uh, we actually fixed uh, this uh, a few times with our ACS that uh, we just closed the, the, the controlling port of the DDoS and uh, just, just made the, the virus go away. So uh, how all of these uh, new features are handled by manufacturers? Uh, Manufacturers usually have a very custom approach. <laughs> uh, as we all know, uh, the protocol specifies a lot of things quite good uh, and they are um, going along with that. But uh, sometimes the customizations are done even just for the single customer, right? So we need to deal uh, with uh, many custom parameters, many custom flows and uh, on the ACS, 
uh, side, we need to uh, to be very flexible uh, to be able to handle this uh, in in long long story short, right? Um, some of the of the um, vendors also implement uh, different protocols, uh, but uh, usually it is done in a way that they just uh, uh, configure and implement uh, the uh, custom uh, TS69 parameters or RPCs. Uh, there are also uh, new problems uh, into TR69 uh, management uh, due to this Wi-Fi mesh uh, devices connecting. They are behind uh, NAT and they are usually not using the management VLAN, for example, right? So this uh, gives us some some um, uh, new problems because we need to have uh, connectivity over over public internet, as the gateway is not uh, aware. Um, that the Wi-Fi mesh is is not actually uh, should should connect over the management VLAN, right? So here we have more um, use cases for the XMPP stun. Uh, for IPTV set to boxes, uh, they have very big uh, firmware upgrades, like over 700 megabytes. This is something what was not happening for gateways, where we have around 30, 50 megabytes uh, uh, firmware files. So this is another challenge which we need to to do with uh, with the uh, to fix with the AC. Yes, um, and uh, this uh, custom firewall configuration. This this also uh, is uh, let's say some somewhat of, of a problem, uh, which uh, sometimes we need we need to fix uh, from the network layer. For example, connection request uh, port. Uh, ISPs are doing it on single port, so they know uh, from where uh, the device is connecting, and uh, they can allow this on their uh, firewall policies. Uh, so how we are solving this in the AV system uh, solution uh, in our ACS, uh, we have uh, dialects uh, which uh, which can um, uh, be configured on the fly and uh, they can map uh, any vendor specific uh, settings uh, to the generic virtual data model. Um, we have uh, panels which can be defined in the uh, runtime uh, configuration wizards and also a script support for, uh, for um, uh, writing some uh, custom handlers and uh, just uh, handling the, all of these custom methods. Uh, we also have full full support for Stun and XMPP to handle these uh, devices which are uh, behind that. Um, also, uh, we have uh, multi-protocol support. This is uh, something what uh, ACSs are also leaning towards, that uh, th there will be multi -protocol, uh, multiple protocols supported. It can be even applied to TR69 and TR369, right? Uh, there are, uh, let's say, similar protocols, but uh, from the functionality perspective, TR369 is implementing a lot of modern uh, mechanics. Um, and uh, of course, we also have self-management uh, module where we can um, just have uh, the application for the end customers and to allow them to control uh, all the parental controls uh, and uh, just control fully their, their gateway and even run some diagnostics locally. Okay, thank you.